Hi traders, welcome to this week ahead analysis video with me, John Kibler, Senior Market Analyst at Blueberry Markets. In this video, I'm going to take you through the week ahead. We're going to have a little look at some charts to watch as well. So let's dive into the news. There's actually quite a lot of interesting news coming out this calendar week. We're looking at some central bank speeches uh, as well as some FOMC meeting minutes and some sort of CPIs and PMI data. So we do kick it off with two central bank speeches. Features. We've got the Bank of England Governor Bailey speaking at 6.45pm on the Monday. And then we've got the RBA Governor Bullock speaking as well. So Pound Oz is actually a chart that we want to take a look at going into this week. So interesting that we've got two central bank speakers speaking on the Monday. We then have the monetary policy meeting minutes out of Australia, followed by CPI in Canada. That's looking to come in a little bit above previous up from the potential minus 0.1% to 0.2%. And then the US FOMC meter minutes are going to be the big talking point going into this week. We also have unemployment claims out of the US as well as the flash manufacturing PMI and services PMI. Europe as well, seeing those manufacturing and services PMIs as well as the UK. So towards the end of the week, we're definitely going to see a little bit more volatility. Moving on to the strength meter then, we're actually seeing a lot of currencies coming into these extremes now. So we've got Euro still remaining as a plus five currency hasn't actually moved away from that. So potentially a little bit of flatlining going on here at this current moment in time. The pound has moved into a reversal territory as well, coming into the minus five. The Australian dollar is the strongest currency at the moment, being plus seven. So that's coming into what we like to see as an extreme reversal area as well. New Zealand dollar also coming into the sort of uh, reversal areas as well as yen. Now, the way I like to look at the currency strength meter is in sort of two different ways. What this is actually telling us is the fact that this, let's say for euro, for instance, the euro is strong. OK, so the way I like to kind of look at the currency strength meter and kind of map my potential week out is I just look at what is strong and what is weak, but also what it's also telling me is that it's at an extreme level of strength and that the point is when something's at an extreme level of strength we're either going to see one or two things at that point we're either going to see that that currency reverse its strength and we're going to see a little bit of weakness coming in or it's going to continue so at the moment i'm seeing this as euro is a strong currency but it has a potential to to reverse we've got the australian dollar as a really strong currency with the potential to reverse and then on the weak side of things we've got the, the pound as a potential currency that is weak but could reverse into that strength and we've got the new zealand dollar and we've got the Japanese yen. Okay, now the Japanese yen has been weak for some time, but it's actually come into that sort of reversal zone now. So the way you kind of look at this is you want to be looking at potential either long on euro pound into a level of resistance. Okay, once it hits a big level of resistance, that's when we could see the dynamics change here and you could see that sort of reversal area come in. And then you've got the Aussie New Zealand as well. You've got euro kiwi obviously and of uh, obviously euro yen pound oz as well could be something to watch out for as well as aussie yen so you've got kind of six currency pairs you can work with there for the potential reversals as well as the continuing of these trends right so the way i like to use the currency strength meter though is to look for that reversal factor because when something's so strong for so long you can often see sharp pullbacks in the market so let's go into the us dollar index let's look at some charts of interest going into this week obviously the dollar very important market to be watching at the moment we've got the fmc meter minutes coming up as well we actually if you go and look at the us 10-year bond yields as well you can see that we came into that five percent level and have rejected and started to push lower that's having an influence here on the us dollar index and you can see the us dollar weakening and we've just breached this 104 spot 50 level so in last week's week ahead analysis we discussed the fact that if price traded below the 105 spot 50 the next level of interest is going to be this 104 spot 50. we've got a similar situation going on with this week if price holds below 104 spot 50 the next level of support now is down at the 103s which were these lows that formed around the end of august start of september so that's going to be the next point of interest if you are looking to sell the us dollar 
Going on to euro dollar then, what does that mean for this market? Well, it means that this market is more likely to move to the upside because the US dollar index obviously heavily weighted to the euro. So what we tend to see is the opposite reaction. So if, you, if the dollar index is falling, euro US dollar is likely to continue to move to the upside. Now, there are a couple of resistance points that we need to be aware of going into this week. We can see that these highs here around about the end of August, start of September, very much like what we just watched, uh, looked at at that low on the US dollar index, is a high here on the euro US dollar. So there's a potential for price to push into this level here. If we do see a little bit of a rejection, it may want to come back and retest these previous lows that have been formed. My level of interest, which I quite like, is this level just above, which is the one spot 0986. Now, what I did to get this level was I drew a fixed range volume profile from this high down to this low, that high back in July and this low in October of this year. And what it did, it produced a point of control and that point of control was at the one spot 0986. So that is the most volume traded level within this downward trend that we've seen. It's also, if you were to jump up to a monthly chart, I can't do this on this because this is a, a presentation, but if you were to jump to a monthly chart, it is also the monthly close of July, okay, of 2023. So there's a big, big area here. So if you were to look at this as, as a monthly chart, it looks like a big candle wick like this, right, back in July. That's how it looks. So this is a big area here where we have a massive wick on that monthly chart. So what I'm looking for essentially is if we overshoot this high, this actually could be a very big level of interest for traders in a very short uh, sort of in that kind of time period. We could see a move into that and a rejection back down as sellers may see this as an interesting place to get back involved in the market. That should coincide, if I just go back to the US dollar index here, that should coincide potentially with that 103 level as well, which is something you need to keep an eye on. Going on to the dollar yen price then. So I've actually split the screen into two here. This is the uh, four hour time frame. This is the weekly time frame. And what I'm looking at here is sort of where price could head towards. We've came into that 151 spot 89, which was a previous weekly high. We rejected and you can see we've got this almost clear rejection point here. If you were to merge two weeks together there, it would look like a very large uh, pin candle, quite similar to the sort of previous week here um, so again that's showing us that there's a rejection of higher prices and that price may want to push back to the downside now i do have this long-term trend line support point in and that was from the lows back in march so that might be an area where price wants to sort of move higher from and on the four hour chart here we can see some clear levels of demand as well you've got this low back here in october around about that 149 level which could be a good area for uh, sellers to target especially because look at the sort of aggressive buying that came after price hit that 149 recently so may see a move down into 149 and a rejection back to the upside a breach of 149 could see a move down towards this sort of trend line support which sits around about that 140 eight handle going on to pound aussie then so from a currency meter point of view the pound one of the weakest currencies aussie one of the stronger currencies so in theory we should see price try and push lower here however they are in reversal zone so what we may see this week is a break of one spot nine zero sixty and a move into the one spot eighty nine fifty these are the lows back in November. That may be the point where we start to see buyers come back in because if we kind of look at it as a whole here on this daily time frame, I could just expand that range out between the one spot 93 highs and this one spot 89.50 low. So we could see price just come into there and then trade within this range that we've seen develop since the sort of end of September of this year. So that's also something to watch. Obviously, if, the, if we do flip and we do start to see the pound getting stronger, the Australian dollar start to weaken, then this one spot 9060 could be a level of support. So price could come into there, hold here and then bounce up towards that one spot 93 handle. So that's also something to watch going into this week. I really hope you enjoyed this video analysis. Uh, if you did, please leave a thumbs up on the video and I'll catch you in the next one.